Today I'll show you how to build an agent that automatically generates realistic UGC ads using VO3 or Sora 2, all managed from a single Google Sheet. This setup is super powerful and it will save you a ton of time. You'll be able to drop in some simple product details, including a product image, and the workflow will handle the rest. So here are a couple of examples that the system was able to produce. So product name is Root Rise Grow Tonic. Description is an organic growth booster that helps plants thrive. And here is the product image. And then we selected VO 3.1 for the video generation model. And here is the finalized video. I started using Root Rise last month and my tomatoes have never looked better. It's so cool how it really boosts the roots naturally. Next, the product name is Pure Bloom Foaming Cleanser and the description is a gentle plant-based face cleanser that removes oil and impurities. And then the, here's the product photo. We selected Sora 2 as the video model and here is the finalized video. Morning, I just wanted to show you the Pure Bloom Foaming Cleanser I've been using lately. It has this super soft cushiony foam that gets everything off without leaving my skin tight or dry. Let me give you a little demo here. I just asked ChatGPT to give me some product details for skincare related products. I'm just going to copy and paste these into the appropriate fields. Next, we need a photo link, which is a product photo. I'm going to generate a product photo using Nano Banana in the Google AI Studio. I'm asking ChatGPT to generate the prompt for this product photo, and I'm going to copy this and paste it into here. Now, I'll leave a link in the description to a doc where I have all of these prompts that I'm using in this video so that you can just copy and paste them yourself. Here's our product image, and I'm going to download this, and then I'm going to upload it to Cloudinary. Since I've uploaded it, now I can copy the URL and paste this into the Google Sheet under the photo link. Now I can set the video model to either VO 3.1 or Sora 2. So I'm gonna choose VO 3 and I'll set the status to ready to generate. And as soon as that row is set to the ready state, the workflow will be triggered and the product data will be sent to your AI agent whose job is to generate an optimized prompt for the video generation model that you selected. In this case, it's VO 3. That prompt is then sent to VO 3 to start the video generation and the row in the sheet is updated to the generating status. And so all we have to do is wait. And after about a minute or so, the video will be done generating and it will trigger this webhook, which will update the sheet with the status completed and the final video link. I'll show you how to set this up step-by-step, step, but if you wanna just download this template for free, I'll show you how to do that later in the video. Now here's that finalized video for the Luna Glow Cream. I love how this keeps my skin so soft and gloving all day. Now I'm going to show you exactly how all this works so that you can build it yourself. We have two different automations within this workflow. This first one is for watching the Google Sheet for new rows and starting the video generation process. And then the second one waits for the video to be finished and updates our Google Sheet with the video data. We'll start out with this first one. The trigger is a Google Sheets trigger. It's connected to our Google account via this credential. I'll link a video here showing you how to set this up. Every minute, it's going to check the Google Sheet for updates or new rows. And if there are any, it'll start the workflow. It sends all the rows to the filter node, which will filter out any rows that are not in the ready state. So we're only processing rows that we manually marked as ready. And that's important so that we can input all the necessary product data before processing starts. So really quick, I'm gonna add a new row and set it to the ready state. Here it is, we got Soul Mist Vitamin C Serum and here is the product photo. Now before we mark this as ready, I'm going to deactivate the workflow so that we can step through it ourselves and see what's happening behind the scenes. I'll set the row to ready and in NAN, I'll trigger this workflow myself. So by clicking this, we're triggering the Google Sheets trigger which will get all of the rows in our Google Sheet. We get nine items, but only one of them is ready to be processed. So if we execute the filter step, we'll see that only the one item was kept and the other eight were discarded. The one that was kept has a status ready and it's the only one that'll move on to the next step, which is the edit fields node. Now this step doesn't really do anything to our data. All it does is defines a callback URL that we're gonna use later on in the workflow. So don't worry about this step too much. Just make sure the include other input fields is set to true and you put the input fields to include to all. In the output, you see we have all the fields that came in the input plus a callback URL. This data moves on to the next node, which is responsible for routing us down a specific path based on the video generation model that we selected in the Google Sheet. So it's checking if the video model field is equal to VO3, and in that case, it branches this way. And if it's Sora 2, it'll branch this way. 
Setting it up this way makes it easy to extend this workflow in the future and make it work for more video generation models. All you'd have to do is create another branch. Anyway, let's execute this. And we see the video generation model in this row is VO3, so it branches us this way. And this is where we start using AI in the automation. This here is an AI agent node, and we're feeding it the product name, description, scene, and ideal customer as the user prompt. And then down here, we have its instructions in the form of a system message. We're giving it an overview, so what its role is and what it needs to do. Then there's a compliance and quality guidelines section so that it doesn't break the VO3 rules and cause an error. And then we define the output format so that it knows how the video generation prompt needs to be structured. Again, I'll put a link in the description so you can download this workflow and copy and paste the system prompt instead of having to rewrite it all. If it wasn't obvious, the point of this agent node is to generate an optimized video generation prompt that we can send to VO3 based on the product data from the Google Sheet. And the AI model that is hooked up to this is the OpenAI 4.1 Mini, which is super fast and super cheap. Running this node will cost a fraction of a penny. So let's run it. And it took all of our product data and outputted this video generation prompt. This output will move on to the next node, which is an HTTP request node that sends an API request to VO3, which will start the video generation process. If you're unsure about what an API request is, that's totally fine. It basically means we're communicating with an external service. So if I open this up, we have an API request configuration here. The URL is to Key AI. We've already worked with Key AI in previous videos, but if you're new here, this is what it looks like. It's a service that allows you to use various video generation models. So VO3, Sora, Grok. So this node will basically tell this service that we want to start generating a video with VO3. Down here is where we define the video configuration. So we say the model, the generation type, reference to video, aspect ratio, 16 by nine. We give it the image URLs. So we're, we're sending in the photo link from our Google Sheet, the prompt from our AI agent node, and the callback URL, which we defined earlier in the edit fields node. And we'll touch more on this in a bit. If you're ever curious what the input JSON should look like, all you have to do in key AI is go to the model you're using and then click on API. Then you'll be directed to the docs where you'll see the body input. And so this body input is what you send into this JSON structure here. So we have the prompt, the image URLs, the model, generation type, aspect ratio, and so on. Also, if you don't wanna configure this node yourself, all you have to do is copy the curl request in these docs and then click import curl, paste it in here and click import and it's gonna automatically configure this HTTP request node. Now, in order to connect your key API account, you'll have to set up an authentication credential type. So choose a generic credential type and choose bearer auth, and then you'll need to create a new credential. See, we need a bearer token here. So to get that, you'll go to key API and create a brand new account. Then you'll go to API key and click create API key. You'll give it a name, whatever you want. I'll name this NAN. You'll be able to copy this API key here and paste it into this bearer field after typing bearer space and then paste in your key. And then when you click save, it should be good to go. Before running this though, just make sure you have some credits in your account. I believe when you create a new account with Key AI, they give you some free credits. Okay, so once I execute this step, the video will start generating. We can see the status of this on the logs page in Key AI. So I'll go to logs and then click VO. And there it is, it's running. And then we get a task ID as the output in this node. So we take that task ID and we send it to this Google Sheets update node, which will send the task ID and save it to the sheet. So let's run this step. And now if we look at our sheet, first of all, the status is set to generating and we have the task ID inputted and the generated prompt from our AI agent that we can look at. That's gonna take a couple minutes to generate. While it does that, I'll walk you through this next automation. So it's triggered by a webhook. So anytime an external service calls this production URL in the webhook, the workflow will be triggered. What we did is we took that webhook URL and we set it as the callback URL here. And we send that to key API when we initiate the video generation process. See, we're sending in the callback URL. So once the video is completed on key API's side, they're gonna call that webhook URL, letting us know that the video is done 
and initiating this next workflow. The video finished up, and if we look at the executions in NAN, we can see there was an execution that initiated the webhook. So the webhook went off, and it has a bunch of data that has to do with our video, like the video link. We send that to the get row and sheets node that's going to get the row based on the task ID, and then there's a switch node that takes the Google Sheet video model and will branch us in a certain direction based on that video model. So if it's VO3, it's going to extract the video link like this. And if it's SOAR2, it's going to extract the video link like this. So the reason we're splitting here is because the webhook response is structured a bit differently for VO3 and SOAR2. So we wanna make sure to extract the video link based on that output. Anyway, after that's done, the data is then saved to our Google Sheet via this update Google Sheet row node. And we send in the status, which could be completed or failed based on the webhook response. And then of course the video link. So if we look at the Google Sheet, we see the status is completed and we have the video link that we can now watch. But before we do that, let me just show you how I set up the Sora 2 branch and I'll show you the system prompt here for the agent. Again, we're sending in the same user message with product name, description, scene, and ideal customer. Then the system message has an overview, the realism and safety guidelines, and then an output format. And then for the create store to video HTTP request, we're sending in the same authentication bearer auth. And for the JSON, the model is Sora 2 Pro Image to Video, and we send in the same callback URL. And then the input has a prompt with the image URLs the aspect ratio, and frames, which, which is the amount of seconds the video will be. You can set this to, I believe, 25 is the max. And then the size is standard. You could also set this to high. And then remove watermark is set to true. So with that, I'm able to set the video model to SOAR2 instead of VO3.1. And it's gonna go down this route and generate that prompt for SOAR2 specifically, and generate that video with SOAR2. And then once it's done generating, it's going to call this webhook automation that's going to save the video link to our sheet. If you want to download this workflow for completely free, you can join my community linked in the description. And here you'll find the video you're looking for and download the .json file, which you can then upload to NAN by clicking the three dots up top and selecting import from file. That way you'll have the template ready to go and all you have to do is set up the credentials for the different services. Also, joining the community is a great opportunity to network and collaborate with like-minded people who are also interested in AI automation. It's growing fast, we've already got over 1,000 members, and I'm excited to continue growing the community and sharing all the workflows for free. So there you go. You now have a fully automated system for generating UGC video ads. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.